It is rare for a first-time novelist to build up the amount of buzz our next guest is generating. Tommy Orange is using fiction to explore the very real issues surrounding identity, stereotypes, and what it's like to be Indigenous and living in an urban city. The book is called There There. And Tommy Orange is our guest in studio this morning. Tommy, welcome. I first of all wanted to say I loved your writing style. Right from the beginning, I could hear a voice, your voice. And just like with all good storytellers, it made me want to sit and listen and read some more. So, so glad you're here to talk about the book this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, the book, however, doesn't start out with fiction. The prologue, prologue starts out with an essay. Why was it important for you to start a story this way? Well, I, I just like prologues, um, just generally for, for novels. I like them to open with prologues. It gives the, uh, context for the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, but for Native people um, and First Nations people, um, we, we have a tendency to, to need to explain a lot before we even start talking about something, because history has been gotten wrong for so, many, uh, for so long for so many different kinds of Native people. Uh, this, our story has just been taken and you know, um, used conveniently for, um, for the people who have uh, been in power all this time. Um, they've used it for, for bad purposes. It's been the wrong story, so we have the tendency to want to set the record straight. I like how in the prologue, prologue you start about how gathering with Native and Indigenous people started out uh, as something that was supposed to be a celebration, ended up not that way, but your book is also about people gathering and coming together ultimately for a separation. Uh, in the story that you're trying to set straight, I want to read a bit from the prologue. You write, and we have this for people, plenty of us are urban now, us meaning Indigenous peoples, if not because we live in cities, then because we live on the internet. Inside the high rise of multiple browser windows, they used to call us sidewalk Indians. They called us citified, superficial, inauthentic, cultureless refugees, apples. An apple is red on the outside and white on the inside. Why was it important for you to tackle and take down those stereotypes? Well, we just have to, we've had to live with them for so long. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to, to get a good, good sense of self and feel like you belong and be a thriving person when you have to battle against so many misperceptions. Some of those uh, that you tackle are through this large cast of characters. There's, there's a dozen. But I love that you made that choice because, you know, it's important to note Indigenous people are, there's diversity within the Indigenous community. Uh, how did you choose who and what to represent? Well, one of the things that we struggle with is the monolithic idea of the native, mm -hmm. and it's historical and it's past tense. And I just wanted to represent a, a range of different experiences and ages and um, uh, different types of people. Do you have a favorite character? I don't. Um, I, I, I see Opal as a pretty central character, um, but also Dean. I mean, I have sort of twelve main characters, um, so it's hard to it, it's hard to decide which one I like the best. There's a lot of pressure, I imagine, that comes with being a, a native writer, talking about the community, to, to get it right, or as you said, to, to set the record straight. Did you feel that writing the story, or did you just write the story? I just wrote it. Um, a lot of the pressure um, is happening now. It's scary to be out in the public eye. Sure. Um, but I, didn't, I was just writing. I didn't expect anything to happen, um, especially anything like this. Did you feel the importance of the history and when you were writing about this idea of resetting the record, of, of writing the truer version of the story? Yeah, I mean, I, I really wanted to write a good novel was sort of the baseline. Um, that the history comes into it has to do with my own experience and including my own experience in the work. And what is some of that experience? Oh, just growing up in the city, growing up um, um, native and what that means to me, what I've seen it mean to my community. Um, and um, trying to help um, my people and our vision for the future. People from the non-native, non-indigenous communities, what's their response been to you when they read the story? I've had, it's, it's been amazing. I mean, everyone's been connecting to the, to the work, and that's what, you, um, that's what you want when you, when you try to write um, something you want to connect to the reader. This was a six-year journey for you. Uh, you see you see why it took so long. It's a really well-written story. Is it overwhelming for you at all that this is your first time novel and people are this excited about your work? Um, the short answer is yes. <laughs> uh, but whatever is beyond overwhelming is more what it feels like. I'm not sure if there's a word for that or um, yeah, yes. You should feel very proud. Do you? Uh, I'm sure I, it's fleeting. You know, the good feelings are fleeting and the anxiety sort of rushes in and bounce back and forth. And, um, but uh, yeah, I, I do. 
What's the biggest takeaway you want people to take away from this book? Um, I just hope that people get an updated version of what Native people are and what, what we can be. It's a beautiful story. The name of the book, the novel, is There, There, and its author, Tommy Orange, was with us this morning. Thanks so much, Tommy. Thank you.